Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer. And this is this video is part eight of my Learn the Mern Stack video tutorial where we're building a full stack web application using MongoDB, React.js, Node.js, and Express.js. All right, uh, in the past seven videos, what we've done is we've built our server side and we've started some of our client side implementation. Uh, but what, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm actually just gonna wrap up the tutorial. So it's gonna be a, a longer video um, on, the, on a, around about an hour or so. Um, but we're going to have a fully functioning, the ability to take notes, the ability to save those notes, and the ability to paste in a YouTube video, um, and then be able to take notes uh, next to it. All right. So if you've stuck with me through the whole tutorial, thanks so much for sticking with me. Um, and this will be the culmination of all your work. Um, but if you're uh, here for the first time, be sure to subscribe. Um, and then you can also find the whole tutorial in this playlist. Um, and then it should lead you up to this point. Um, but if you want to skip all that and just focus on this last part, you can clone the repo and check out the uh, tutorial part seven branch of that repo, and then you'll be able to code along with me in this video. All right, um, before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button uh, so you don't miss out on future videos. Hey folks, so here I am back in VS Code. Uh, so I'm gonna say git checkout dash b tutorial part eight. Nice. Um, actually, it looks like I did not commit the changes. Yeah, so if I say git add dash u, git add client, git status, cool. And say git commit uh, tutorial part seven. Okay, nice. Um, so now um, I just need to get, say git push origin uh, tutorial part seven. Awesome. So now I just say, uh, I'm just gonna start clean. So I'm gonna say git branch dash D uh, tutorial part eight, like this. Awesome, so that deleted that branch and I'm just gonna say git checkout dash B tutorial part eight. Awesome. So where we left off last time is we uh, had our app bar that we created um, that has um, an icon button for or a, a vertical uh, menu for um, going home and signing out. Um, and then we also added our auth form and some uh, authentication state. And then we added some uh, private routes right here. So private route, awesome. Um, cool, so we have this really simple homepage uh, that we're going to, uh, that we had from the last video. So we're gonna make this actually a little bit more um, complicated or a little bit more involved rather, not necessarily complicated. All right, so we're not gonna need this um, use state from here. So, um, so const homepage is just going to be uh, a functional component. And then inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in the username. So we're gonna say const username uh, is equal to use auth. All right, so I'm, I had a bug in my last video where I um, misnamed this. So let's just verify inside of app.js that we're actually calling it username. Yes, we are, okay, awesome. So we have that username and then we're gonna say const, whoops, const uh, data and uh, loading is equal to use fetch, which we're gonna design in a second, use fetch of API slash notes, and we're not gonna pass in a body and then we're just gonna say get, all right? Um, cool, all right? And then we're gonna say const new note. So this is gonna be a function. So we're gonna call this when someone creates, wants to create a new note, all right? So it's just gonna be props.history.push. And then we're just gonna say path name is going to be equal to slash new, like that. All right, um, and so in order to have this work in order to have access to the history inside of our props we have to import with router uh, from react router dom here all right 
And then we need to wrap this component with router of home page. And then that gives us access to this props.history. Okay. Now we need to do some logic. So we need to say if not username. So if username isn't set or is undefined, um, we want to return a redirect to and to log in. All right. So that means if, if the user doesn't exist um, or if the user isn't logged in, we want to return them to the login page. All right. So now we're just going to get into the design of this home page. All right. So the home page is actually just going to be a list of or contain a list of notes with a floating action button to add a new one. Okay. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, return. And then inside of here is just going to be a grid. If you haven't, uh, if you're just following along in this tutorial for the first time, you'll find out that I just kind of really love the material uh, UI grid component. I, I basically overuse it. Um, so um, yeah, so there's that. So anyway, container. So the type is going to be container. We're going to say style is equal to uh, width of 100%. Again, and I also love inline styles which is not really the best way to do things. So direction is equal to column here. Uh, and then align items. So we want to center everything in the column. So we're just going to say center. All right. So that's the container portion of the grid. And then inside, we're going to have a grid uh, item. And then the item is going to be, so the number of columns we wanted to take up when it's a medium width screen, we want it to take up eight columns. Uh, when it's a small screen, we want it to take up 10 columns. All right. So if, you, if for the uninitialized, uh, the material UI grid has 12 columns. So when a medium screen, we want it to take up two thirds. Um, and then on a extra small screen, we want it to take up 10 twelfths, I guess you would say. So 10 twelfths of the screen. So then uh, we're going to say the component that we want to assign this grid to I'm going to actually be a card. So what this is basically saying, we want the component that is rendered uh, for this grid item to be a card. Um, and then we're also going to say this is also a container. And then we're just going to give it an, a direction is going to be equal to row. And we're going to say justify uh, space between. Space between and align items is equal to center. All right, and one more thing that we need to add, we're gonna throw some elevation in there. So we're gonna say elevation is equal to five. All right, um, and we're gonna add an inline style again, and we're gonna say margin uh, is 40 pixels. Great, um, cool. So that's the item, and then what we're gonna put inside of this um, <laughs> is just gonna be another grid item of excess so that at the smallest width. So basically what this is saying, uh, for the smallest size screen, we want it to fill up the entire container. So this grid item is going to fill up either eight columns of this, whatever the, basically this grid item is going to fill up eight columns of this top level container for the medium size screen or 10 columns of the extra small screen. All right. I hope that that might have been a little confusing, but either way. So anyway, now what we want to do is we want to selectively show the table while the data or so if the data is loading, we're loading the data from the server. What we want to do is actually um, not display the table until the data is loaded. OK, so what this looks like is we're just going to say loading um, and then we're going to say null if it is. And then otherwise, we're just going to return a component called note table, which we're going to define. And then we're going to pass in the table data like that. Awesome. OK. And then at the end here, we're going to have a um, we're going to have another <laughs> grid container item. Yes. So we're just going to say grid container um, direction is equal to row. And this is going to be the container for the floating action button. So it's going to be also be an item. We're going to say excess is equal to 10. 
and MD is equal to eight. Uh, justify is equal to flex end. And inside is just gonna be a fab. Of, uh, and then the color is going to be primary. And, and then on click, so the on click function is just gonna be uh, new note like this. Awesome. And inside is just gonna be an edit icon like this. Awesome. So I think this is gonna yell at me because we didn't report import any material UI stuff. So I think you need to do, we need to do import uh, grid, card, and uh, I think fab as well from at material UI core. And then we also need to import uh, edit icon from at material UI icons like this, I believe. Just to verify. Uh, yeah, so this is actually called edit here. Awesome. And we don't need to pull this out here like this. Just wanna, all right. <clears throat> cool, and then we need to pull in, so import uh, use auth from um, auth auth like that, and we're going to need to pull in this new use fetch. So it's going to be import use fetch. You know, you don't really have to do this. So what we're basically doing with use fetch, and we'll see in a second, is we're providing a hook. Uh, so for any time we want to create an API call, this use fetch. Uh, basically encapsulates that logic. But the way we were designing these components is you could basically use a, uh, you could just use fetch directly in the component because it's pretty self-contained, self right? So, um, you know, if we're at the home page, we're fetching all the, user, all the user's notes, and then we can just pass that data and that state around to whatever components we want to. Um, and then when we update a note or create a new note, we can just call fetch directly from the, from that note page. All right. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to show you what this looks like if we were to do this, um, in a little bit more of a reusable fashion. So we're just going to say util slash API fetch like this. All right. So, um, so this won't compile, uh, because we haven't defined this. Um, and I also haven't started the server. So, um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called util. And then inside of that, I'm going to create a new file called API fetch.js. All right. Okay. So in this file, we're going to create that hook that I was just talking about. So we're going to say import use state and then use effect from react. Nice. And we're going to say const use fetch is equal to, and it's gonna take in a URL, a body, and a type, all right? So by type, we say like the request type, so post, put, get, etc. cetera. Um, and then, so we're gonna have a const uh, data, and then set data, whoops, is equal to use state of null, and then const, is loading or sorry loading set loading and then use state is equal to false all right so basically uh use state we need to set it, have an equal sign here all right so basically what this is doing is we're saying the data this 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 is going to represent the response that we get back from the server and then this will trigger will basically say it are we still loading information from the server Yes or no, and by default it's false. All right. Now we're going to say const get ops is equal to. So um, the method is going to be the request method is going to be type, and headers is going to be. Um, whoops. So the headers are basically all the information we want to include in the headers for the get. Um, get request types. All right, so it's going to be content type, 
is going to be um, an application JSON, and then the X auth token is actually going to be local storage dot get item of token. Awesome. All right, we don't need a semicolon there. All right, so this is going to look very similar for post route. So I'm just going to copy this and put this here and post ops. Um, and it's basically just going to be get ops, but with a body. So it's just going to be dot, 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 get ops, comma, body is equal to body, which is the body that we pass in up here. Okay. And const fetch from API. So fetch API is equal to async. And then we pass uh, async and then we pass in the ops like this. And I'm going to say const response is equal to await of fetch URL and the ops. All right. And then const data is equal to await of response.json and set data of data like that and set loading is equal to false. Awesome. So um, the only thing is we kind of want to say set loading is equal to true here uh, before we send the request and then after we set it equal to false. All right, and then last but not least, we say use effect of, and then inside of use effect, whoops, we say if type is equal to post or type is equal to put, put, just add another equal sign here. So if we want to modify or create data, essentially, we're just going to call fetch API with post ops like this. Um, else, we're going to say fetch. Uh, API with get ops. All right. And at the end of this, we it takes a, an array of like items, uh, the dependencies that this use effect depends on. And we don't we aren't depending on anything here. All right. And then last but not least, we just say export default use fetch like that. Cool. All right, so that was use fetch. Um, if this is a little confusing, so basically what we're doing is we're, when we call use fetch, um, or actually, I'm sorry, yeah. So when we call use fetch, we pass in um, an API or a URL, a body, and a type, right? So if we look at the home page um, and we call use fetch with API notes um, and then an empty body and a get request, that's basically just triggering this. But then the use effect is what calls the fetch API function. So use effect, if type is post or put, then it calls a post request, uh, which is this, which is just the get request, but with a body. And then if it's a get request, then it just calls the get request here. All right, awesome. So now, uh, now let's jump back over to our home page, and then we need to create the table that we're going to use to display our notes. Okay, so in our home page, what we're going to do is, or yeah, our home page folder, we're going to create a new file called note table header uh, .js. And then inside of this, it's going to, we're going to say import react and fragment from react like that. And we're going to say import table cell from at material UI core slash table cell like that. Awesome. So now we're going to say const note table header is equal to, and then it's going to take in um, an object that represents the names or that that like the values that the heading is going to have. So it's just going to say names. And then inside is we're just going to return the component directly. So we're going to say fragment and then inside, we're going to map over the names. So we're going to say names.map. And then the text 
inside of the name and we're going to return a whoops we're going to return a table cell whoops a table cell with the key is equal to text and then a line we're going to say left and variant is equal to head all right and then inside the table cell, we're just gonna put the text. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. So what this method does um, is, or this component does is it just creates a table, a row of cells that will act as the table header given a, uh, a list of names, basically. All right, so uh, now we just need to export this. So we're gonna say export default uh, note table header like that awesome so now we need to create a new file called note table row.js and inside of that is going to it's going to look like the following so import re react from react like that um, and then import table row from at material UI core slash table row. Awesome. And import table cell from at material UI core slash table cell. Awesome. And now we're just going to, uh, and then we need to say import with router from uh, React Router DOM and then we're going to say import delete, whoops, delete from at material UI core icons. All right, cool. So this table cell, this table is going to look like a row with some fields inside of it that map that match was going to be in the table header, the names in the table header, and then there's going to be a button on each row to delete a note. All right. So I'm just going to define this component. So we're going to say const note table row is equal to, and it's gonna take in a few things. It's gonna take in an item number, it's going to take in a note, and then the history. All right, awesome. So now we're gonna define a function called const redirect, it's equal to path, and then it's also, it's gonna take in a path and then the state that we want this redirect to have. So we're gonna say history, dot push and then path name so path and then state is equal to state like this all right so um, this this so this will this will this is what the function that will get called when a row is clicked and we redirect to that actual notes page okay awesome all right so that's redirect uh, and then const handle click is going to be an async and then it's going to take in e and an action so this e represents the item that was clicked the event and the action is what we're actually going to we're trying to do uh, on this click all right so we're going to say e dot stop propagation um, and then so we say if action is equal to view then we're just going to say redirect to uh, the specific note and the data we want to pass in is um, note note all right so this is the state that we're passing in with that note all right so that's the same as this note up here all right uh, else we're going to say con, we're going to pull out the ID of that note. And we're going to say const response is equal to a weight of fetch um, API notes slash plus ID. And so this is how we're going to handle a note getting deleted. So it's the method is going to be uh, delete like this. Whoops. That. 
and uh, the headers are, are going to equal to um, content type is an application JSON. Whoops. Sorry, this um, helper text is annoying. So X auth token is then going to be local storage dot get item of token. All right, this should look very similar to what we just did with the fetch API. But this is a, so this is an example of like, all right, yeah, we created this API fetch, um, but this is the only component that we should have using this delete route. So it's actually not a huge deal to define this again inside of its, um, inside of this component, all right? Um, so there, we could pull this out and put this inside of the API fetch, um, but uh, it's a design choice, honestly. It, if you find that this delete functionality is used elsewhere in your application, then it might be worth it to put it inside of this API fetch um, function here. All right. All right, so now we say const JSON response is equal to await response.json. And we say if JSON response.message is equal to success. Then we say window.location.reload. All right, so this is basically just saying when we delete that message, kick off a reload and re-render the component. All right, all right, cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna design our component. Um, so the table row is actually super simple. Um, so it's just gonna be a return uh, and then it's gonna be a table row and then the props that we're going to pass into this table row are we're going to hover. So the hovers, you know, it'll it'll highlight when it's hovered. I'm going to say name uh, is note.id. Um, key is equal to note.id. And then on click, so when we click on the row, we're going to pass in an event. And then we're just gonna call handle click of E, and then this is going to be a view, all right? Awesome. Um, so the reason why we have to do this is actually, it's kind of a little bit of a weird solution here, right? Because what we have is we have a row click, but then we also have a button that we wanna click within the row. So what I found what was happening when I was uh, building this was that I would click on the delete button, but it would trigger this row click instead. And so it would navigate to a specific um, uh, item. So the way I got around this was I just passed the type of action that we want to occur during this handle click. So when we click on a row, we just wanna view a note, but then when we click on delete, we're gonna say we wanna delete that note. And we'll see what this looks like. So it's just gonna say, um, table cell, uh, and then we're gonna say align is equal to left. And then inside of it, it's just gonna be item number. And we're just gonna copy this a few more times. Um, and this is going to be note.title, and then note.updated at, and then um, actually, and then these other ones we're not aligning, okay? And whoops. And then inside of this, we're just going to define an on click, and then it's going to take in an event, and then we're going to say handle click, and then the e, and then the action is actually delete here. All right, so that's how we kind of get around. Um, that whole issue of like which action um, is actually getting executed when. There might be another way to do that. Um, um, if you have any suggestions on a better way to do this, um, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm, re I'm actually really interested um, in how we could, I could actually do this better. All right, cool. So that is the table row. So now we just need to export default with router of note table row. Awesome. So now we need to make our table body. 
Okay, so we're just going to create a new file and we're going to say note table body.js and it's just going to be another simple component. It's going to be react, import react from react and import table body from at material UI core slash table body like that and import note table row from note table row. And I think I need to actually put the path here like this. Nice. All right, and now const note table body is equal to, and then we're gonna pass in some props, and inside there's not gonna be any state, so we're just gonna say let counter equal to zero. So we're gonna initialize that counter to zero. I'm gonna say const data is equal to props, all right? And then we're gonna say return uh, table body. And then inside it's gonna be is data there. Um, if so, we're just gonna say object.keys dot uh, keys of data, sorry, um, dot map. And then we're gonna map over each key. And then we're gonna generate a table row for each item in the data object. So we're gonna say let note is equal to data of key. And then uh, if not note dot title. So if the title does not exist, we're just gonna return null. So we're not gonna return a row because every note should have a title. And then otherwise we're gonna say return. Um, and then inside of these parentheses, it's gonna be a note table row where the props that we pass in are the key is equal to plus plus counter. All right, so this increments the counter before it's used. So we initialize it to zero. The first row is gonna be actually one instead of zero. Um, okay, and then item number is equal to counter and then note is equal to note like this. Awesome. So that's the table body and then we're gonna say export default note table body. Awesome. All right, so that handles our home page. So when we get this, when we uh, render this home page, it's going to um, tr check if the user is logged in. It's going to fetch. Uh, it's going to try to fetch that information um, from the auth context, and then it's going to render the notes for a particular user. All right. Cool. So when we uh, create a new note, we actually need to navigate to a not only a um, the video note con video container, but we also need to navigate to the editor itself. Okay, so the we're going to need to create a component that encapsulates not only the video container but also the note container as well. All right, so we're going to look into that in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder inside of components and inside it's going to be the note app. So this is actually the meat of our application, right? So this is going to uh, house all of the components related to note taking. All right. So I'm going to actually move the video container inside of the note app directory. Okay. So we wrote this on change and we have the ability to parse the video link. Um, but we need to actually, um, so w there's two ways we can get to this page. There's the, the video, there's two ways that we can get to the video container page, whether it's creating a new video or creating a new note or viewing one that already exists. Okay. So we need to actually, um, pull this in, um, so we can use, we can use what's called the use effect hook, right? So we're going to pull in use effect and then inside we're going to say um, if props.history.location.state. So if the um, location pro uh, object inside of the history object includes a state field, then we're going to pull it out, pull out the note information from that. So we're going to say const note 
is equal to props dot history dot location dot state. All right, so this we're just destructuring to pull out that note. So if you remember, when we get to when we look at a um, the note table row, when we click on a row, we redirect to this note route, and then we pass in note as a part of the state, right? So that's what we're passing in. When we click on a table row, we're passing this note that we clicked on as a part of this state, all right? So then when we pull it out here, that's where we're getting it from, all right? Cool. So we're gonna say set video link uh, of note dot video link like this. And then we're gonna say set video timestamp of note dot video timestamp. All right, and then props dot set video link of note dot video link. All right, yeah, so this is, this is this is a little bit tricky. So if you can imagine, there's a video container and then there's a note container, but then we need a container that orchestrates both of them working together, okay? So what this is, is this props.setVideo link is actually a function call passed in from the video note combination container that we're gonna create in a second. So when we create this video link, Right, so when we set this video link um, in this props, in this props function, it's actually getting propagated back up the tree of components. Um, I know that's kind of hard to visualize, but um, bear with me on that. It's the only way I could really figure out how to propagate this timestamp uh, value back up because the timestamp is actually a part of the video link, I believe. Um, okay, so that should be all we needed to do for this. All right, and then we have our grid with the text field, and then we have the grid with the actual video itself. Awesome. All right, so now, as I said, we actually need to create what's called the video note container. So I'm gonna create that. So I'm gonna say note, uh, video note container.js. And um, so, like I said, this is going to house the logic for, this is gonna house the edit component as well as the, um, the, the editor component as well as the video component. All right, so we're gonna say import react and we're gonna import use state. Um, and then we're also, um, you can import a fragment, but um, we can do, we can get around that uh, without actually explicitly importing a fragment. Um, and then we're gonna say import uh, grid. <laughs> I did say I love the grid, right? And then at material UI core. Uh, and then I wanna import video container from uh, video container. And then we're gonna have import note container from note container. All right, so I just have this commented out right now um, because we don't have that component created, um, but it's just a reminder that we're gonna need it. And I'm gonna say import with router uh, from React Router DOM like that. And then um, that's about it. All right, so const video note container is equal to, and it's gonna take in some props like that. and. Then Okay, so we need a few things, a few pieces of state here. So we're gonna say const video link, uh, set video link, and then is equal to use state of empty. So it's not gonna, it's gonna be empty by default. And then we're gonna say const note, set note, is equal to use state of null. And then const, or yeah, const video ref is equal to react.create ref, all right? So these couple pieces of state are the video link, right? So this is the video link that we're going to use to propagate back up the the uh, the, the component tree. So remember in, in here, in this video container, we pass in this props.setVideoLink, right? And then that's the same as this set video link up here. 
it's pretty pretty neat thing about JavaScript that you can just kind of pass functions all around all over the place and then kind of just it, they just work. Um, as a Java developer, you can't. I mean, you can really you can do that, but it's it's a lot less like it's a lot more strict when you try to do that in Java. All right, so const reset is equal to uh, so this reset function uh, we actually don't need. Sorry. Um, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at like how I did this before, and I added a snack bar like to update the user when their node is saved and like if there was a issue with saving. We're actually going to uh, not do that in this tutorial. I think it's just a, a nice feature to have, but I didn't end up actually um, implementing it in this tutorial. All right, so a few things. So we're going to say uh, let URL base equal to uh, API slash notes. Actually, we don't need the forward slash or the leading slash there. Um, and then <clears throat> we're going to define a function const save is going to be an async function that takes in a note. And then inside, it's going to be const. We're going to destructure the ID, the title, body, author, and type. And then you're just going to say note like this. All right, so say let URL is equal to URL base. And so we're going to say if type is equal to a put, then we're updating a note. So we're just going to say URL plus equals ID. Um, otherwise, we're, it's not a, we're not updating a specific note. We're creating a note. So we're going to say const time is equal to a weight of video ref dot current dot internal player dot current get current time all right so this is this piece of this line of code here is basically saying we have attached the video reference the reference to the video player to a component and then we're getting that internal player and then we're getting the current time so this is a the get current time is a part of the youtube api the internal player is a part of the YouTube React component, and then the current is basically pointing at the current reference that we assign this video ref to. So that's how we're able to pull out that time. Okay. So now we're going to say let request body equal to JSON dot stringify of uh, title body uh, author uh, video link and video timestamp is equal to or is equal to time like that awesome and then we're going to say that because that needs to be an object awesome all right and um so now we say const response is equal to await fetch so I, you know, I spent all that time refactoring out this API fetch, and then I didn't really end up using it. I used it like once. Um, so anyway, so there's you pass in the URL, and then you say method is going to be the type, so it's going to be put or post, and then um, the headers are going to be content type. Type is application json and then the x auth token is equal to local storage dot get item so the reason why i'm laughing is because i did this i basically wrote this code three times um, like this exact stuff here three times which basically tells me it should go in a file somewhere because it, we don't really expect it to change which i did put it in a file but you know of course I'm not using good coding practices in this tutorial. So take everything I'm doing with a grain of salt here. So I'm going to say body request body like this. Awesome. So that's the response we're going to get back. And then if it was successful, we're just going to say set note or we're going to say uh, const JSON is equal to response await response dot JSON. And then we're going to say set note of JSON like this. Cool. All right. So that is the function we're going to use to save a note. And now we just need to define the actual 
um, component that is inside of this. So we're gonna say return. Uh, this is just gonna be a fragment. So this is a nice way to define an empty tag that you don't, like it, it doesn't need to be anything. It's not like a div, it's just an empty fragment. So again, create another grid. <laughs> And then we're going to say container uh, direction is going to be equal to row and justify is equal to space around and align items is equal to center. Um, and then another inline style because that's my MO. We're going to say max height is going to be 100% of its container and then the height is going to be 100% and then the padding is going to be 10 pixels. All right, so we're just gonna say video container, uh, video ref is equal to video ref like this and set video link is equal to uh, set video link and then we're gonna pass in props as well like that and then we're going to have the note container is going to go here all right so let's uh and then we need to um, export default with router uh video note container like that awesome now we need to create a new file called our note container .js, and so this is going to be very similar to um, the um, video container, but it's going to actually even be a little bit more simple. All right, so we're going to say import React from React, and import grid, of course, and card uh, from at Material UI Core, and we're gonna say import notepad from dot slash editor. All right, so we're gonna to have to create this editor component and you'll see what that looks like as well in a second. So we're gonna say const note container is equal to props. So we're gonna you know pass in some props into this note container and it's just gonna be really simple. It's just gonna be a grid container. I'm just going to actually copy this in because it's there's no real need. There's nothing special that I'm doing in this component that um, you need to see me type out. Cool. All right. So this is just a grid container. Uh, elevation is five. Component is a card. It's also an item. The container direction is a column. Uh, for small screen sizes, we wanted to take up the full width. Uh, for medium screen sizes, we only wanted to take up five columns. Uh, we added some padding and the max height is 100% of its container. All right, so remember that in the video note container, uh, it's actually gonna be say note container here. Uh, let me just pull it in up here like this, note container. And then this is just gonna be note container. Um, and then I'm not really sure what I need to actually pass in. Um, one second. All right, so we sit, we have props here, and then we have handle save, and we say, yeah, okay. So, so the handle save function is a function that we pass in as part of the props, which is just the save function from the wrapper class up here. So here, what we're going to say is handle save is going to be equal to um, save or note and then save note like this and then inside of the note container we have handle save that we're passing in is actually props dot handle save of note like this and so it just keeps getting propagated back up so in this notepad component there's going to be a handle save method that it accepts as a prop that we're going to call when the save button is clicked on that component. Um, I know it's a little bit confusing, but it's a nice way to this this top level wrapper class is making our lives a little bit easier because we only need to def 
we're synchronizing two components at the same time. That's what makes it hard to kind of pull off. Um, and that's why we have to keep passing these functions from this top level all the way down to actually the button where it's actually used. Note is equal to note. And then we need to say, we also wanna pass on the rest of the props here. All right, and that's that. Cool, so the video note container is finished. The note container is done, but we also need to create the notepad. I'm gonna create a new file called editor. Dot JS. All right, so a lot of this I actually um, pulled in from the um, Slate JS, um, uh, like the Slate JS website, um, and I'll link it in the description. So what I just pasted in is some of the uh, components that we'll actually need to use to kind of pull this off. All right, so um, we pull in editable with React, use Slate and Slate, and then we have the editor transforms and create editor uh, from that as well. And then we define a special button, which we'll do in a second, and then we pull in use auth, and then there's some other like material UI stuff that we pull in as well. All right, um, so um, like I said, a lot of this is um, some boilerplate that I pulled in, um, so just kind of bear with me here um, and we'll just we'll just trust me here and then we'll we'll kind of you know if, if there's any questions on how I did anything that I'm going to do um, please feel free to you know leave a comment below so numbered list so the list types so we're only going to support numbered list and bulleted list so these are the key like the keys for that. All right, um, and then const notepad is equal to props. And then inside, so we wanna set an initial value for our notepad. And the way, the way to do that um, is you basically have to define it in the exact format that Slate expects. So it's an array of objects and then it has children um, and then inside it's gonna be text, and then the text we can just have as empty, all right? Uh, like I said, bear with me because there's a lot of weirdness that Slate does that isn't specifically, um, isn't things that, aren't things that you really need to worry about. All right, so I'm, we're gonna to have to have some state, so I'm gonna bring in some more stuff here. So this should look a little familiar. So we're pulling in the username from the use auth, we have an ID uh, that we are setting inside of state. We have a value, which is the value inside of the text editor, the title of the note, the author of the note, which is also the username. And then is new note is by default true. Um, and then we have this these render element, render leaf, and then editor. So these are all slate boilerplate here. All right, so, you know, um, I'll, I'll link to where this exists um, on on their website, uh, but yeah, this is pretty much from uh, their code examples um, that we had. All right, um, and now we just need to define some of our functionality. So we have to say const button click <clears throat> is equal to an arrow function, <clears throat> excuse me, where we say if title, so basically if title is empty, or not empty, not the actual text empty. Uh, we just wanna say alert, uh, you must provide a title for your note, awesome. Okay, and then we just return. All right, so if the button is clicked, we create that new note, we say let note equal to um, ID, ID, uh, title, title, um, body is JSON, JSON dot stringify of value. So the value is again, what's inside of that text editor. And then the author is equal to the author. And then the type 
is going to be is new note. If it is, then it's a post request because we're creating, otherwise it's a put request. All right, and then we say props.handle save of note, and then set value, value. All right, so again, here's this props.handle save. So if we look at the note container, we have this handle save inside of this notepad component, which we're pulling in from editor, is handle save, which we're defining as the props.handle save from the props that are passed into the note container. And then inside of the note container, we pass a handle save of note and note, or of, of this save function. So the save function is basically how we write to the database. So if you can imagine all the way down in this tree where we're at the bottom, at, like when we have a button that, that says save note, it's actually triggering the container component two levels above this actual editor, all right? Um, I really hope that's gonna make sense. I really should have uh, created a diagram just to help you out, to help you visualize this. But anyway, so now we need to have a use effect <coughs> here. So inside of this use effect, we're gonna say let note equal null, all right, by default. And then we say if props.note, and we say uh, note is equal to props.note. And we're say set title, note.title. And then set value, note.body. And note ID, or set ID is equal to note.id. And then set is new note is equal to false. Okay, so this is this this is the when we click a link from our um, our table, uh, click on a note from our table. This is the if statement that handles that. Okay, and then else, I'm sorry, that is not true. Yeah, um, else if um, if props dot history dot location dot state so if that's the case, then we say note is equal to props.history.location.state.note um, and then set title, note.title, set value is note.body and then set ID is note.id and then set is new note is equal to false. All right, so yeah, so this is what happens when we pass in a note directly as a prop, or we pass it from the state, okay? Awesome. Uh, and then this is required, what's required inside of here is just the props that we pass in. Okay, and now we need to actually design the component. All right, again, this is all pretty close to boilerplate of the um, actual like of, of from slate. So I'm just going to copy this in and I'm just going to walk you through what this does. All right. So we have a top level container. That's a column, All right? So this is going to house the title, uh, text field, as well as the actual slate component. And then we have, uh, the container column, justify center grid item, XS 12, so this is just the text field where we set that title. All right, so, and then we have an on change that sets that title to e.target.value of this text field. Okay, then we have um, the slate component. Okay, so the slate component is just the editor, the value, and then on change set value to the new value um, style, and we have some inline styling, all right? Um, and then this toolbar here is how we define the um, like the rich text pieces that we want. So for example, we have a bold, italic, underline, code, heading one, heading two, block quote, and so on. So this will trigger the formatting that we want to use, okay? Now, so that's just the toolbar. And then beneath that is the editable component, all right? So this is the placeholder says, you know, enter your notes here. So this is the actual text box where you're going to enter 
your uh, text. Uh, and then it auto focuses as well. Okay, um, and again, this, this block of code here is directly from uh, the Slate website, but what you actually, um, the, with the exception of the icons that we pass in, because these are from the material UI icons. All right, um, and then the button is the save button, right? So when we click save, that's when this whole life cycle is triggered here. Okay, awesome. So now, um, cool, so that's the notepad. And we also need to create some additional functionality. Again, this is all what's, what's, what I'm going to paste in here um, is uh, from the examples page on the uh, Slate GitHub page, all right? Okay, so I just pasted in a bunch of stuff, but we're gonna walk through it um, piece by piece. All right, so this toggle block function um, basically triggers when we want to start write, start a piece of formatting, right? So we have uh, this is block active function that takes in an editor and it takes in the format. So basically it says, is this active? If, and it stores it in a, in a variable. And then it basically says, is list? if the list types includes format, so basically it's saying, is this a list formatting type? And then it does some transforms on that, and then basically this logic is what allows us to um, turn on or off a specific um, block. So for example, if I have a bulleted list, and then I, I select all of that, and then I wanna unbullet it, this is where that toggle function gets called, okay? Sim it's similar for the rest of the same, all of the formats, but that was just an example, all right? Toggle mark is basically saying start the format here. So like the start the markdown here. So like at this particular uh, point in the editor, make sure that there's this format is where it started. Um, and then you can also um, toggle it on or off. So if we want to remove or turn it on. All right, uh, and then this is that is block active, which is gets called uh, up here. And then is mark active, which is gets, gets used here. And then the element is just the type of element that we want to have. So the way this is all essentially encapsulated is it's just HTML, right? So we have this block quote, um, a list, an H1, H2, a list item, um, this one, and then a paragraph, all right? So this basically just says, if this is the formatting type, then render this component with the children inside of it, all right? And then this is the leaf. Um, so for example, if it's a, a list item with a bunch of children inside of it, then the leaf gets called because you can also, you know, have a child that's also bold, code, italic, or underline, and so on. And then it returns a span of, of the, um, the children. Okay, and then the block button is basically what triggered, when you click this button, it's what triggers the for, which format type to be active, all right? Um, and we actually, we actually need to define this button um, elsewhere. And then this uh, mark button, so um, this is how we trigger a mark as well. All right. All right. So, you know, I, I went up, I went really fast again, the documentation for slate is pretty good. Um, but like I said, there's pretty much like if you follow the, the examples in their GitHub, um, you can basically, um, it's very configurable and you can kind of do exactly, uh, follow along there. Um, but yeah, so for the most part, this editor like is a it's basically a dra uh, a drop in component that I used, and I used some of their GitHub code uh, to implement this. All right, so we need to implement a few more things. So we need to implement the toolbar and the button. So I'm going to create a new file called button.js, and then inside of this, again, so <laughs> interestingly enough, this was actually also used in the um, in the uh, example code for um, um, 
the uh, Slate.js code. All right, so again, I just pulled this in and then I, um, it was all inside of this one like big file. So I pulled out a few of the items just to make it a little bit more uh, maintainable and easier to read. All right, um, and then again, there's this toolbar component that we saw before um, and it's very similar and I'm just gonna copy this in as well. Um, here, and then we also need to create a menu item and here. All right, so I'm just gonna create a new file, uh, menu.js, and then we copy that in. All right, so this menu is, um, again, from the examples uh, from Slate.js. All right, um, and then last but not least, we need one more, and it's the icon. Js, and that is here, like that. Awesome. All right, so yeah, so I did a lot of you know reverse engineering to see how uh, the Notepad uh, with that Slate JS provides works. Um, so you know, caveat with this tutorial is that there's a lot of the code that you you should just be able to pull in. Um, directly from that uh, that their website, which I'll link below. Okay, now the next thing is that we now we have we have our video note container, our video container, and our note container. We actually just need to encapsulate all of that in one top layer, top level component. All right, so we're just going to say new file note app.js, and again, just going to copy this just because I don't want to type it. All right, so. Um, video note container and this is just a component that wraps the video note container and returns it in the note app all right so awesome so that is the note app then we have the home page and then we have the app bar and then we have the our auth so I think we're actually in good shape so um, one last thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that all of our routes are configured properly all right, so we jump back over to our app.js and we need to actually just add a few more private routes. Um, and then instead of home, this is gonna be note. And then instead of uh, home again, it's gonna be new. And then what we're gonna, the component we're gonna pass in is note app and note app like that. Auth form, homepage, note app. Awesome. Cool. So um, I did a lot here. Uh, so let's let, let's try to run this and then let's see what happens. Okay. So we got a error and then we just need to say export default note container here and editor.js. So list types is not defined. Um, List types and then initial value. Uh, and then props is not defined in video container. That's because I didn't pass it in. And note table is not defined, the actual note table body. All right, so I'm just going to create a new file and note. What did I call this? Note table. Yeah. Table.js. And Here's the code for this. It's again, it's just a wrapper component, so I'm just going to paste it in. So it's just a table with a note table header and a note table body, and then we pass in the note table header names, which is the uh, the ID of the the number of the note, the title, and then the last modified here. All right, um, and it's giving me an error in home, saying it's expecting a yeah import note table from note table like that. Again, failed to compile and video note container. Um, props is not defined, line 52. Props, whoops, misspelling. All right, so it's telling me that names is not defined and note table header. 
yes, instead of name, it's names, and I'm not also I'm also not using table. Um, cannot resolve styles app.css in so note app. So I need to actually go up two directories app.css. Can't resolve emotion. Yeah, okay, so there's another uh, package that we need um, in this client. So that package is called um, emotion. So, so the way we install that, um, let me just, so I'm just going to stop our server and I'm just going to say npm install emotion. All right, so that's done. And then I'm going to say npm start. Okay. Um, also, it looks like we didn't actually install our slate dependencies. So we need to say npm install slate, slate history, slate react and I think that is it. Okay, awesome. It compiled and we have we have a few warnings but they're not really a big deal. Um, and then there was so we have another bug too. We forgot to return data and loading. Okay. So here we have we're logged in, we have the table and we have this floating action button and we have, remember, our log out. So if I log out and I try to sign in again, like this, it should redirect me. Awesome, I am authenticated. And now when I hit edit, we have our note editor on the side here and then we also have our title and then we have our YouTube link and YouTube um, component here as well. Um, so let's try to post in a random YouTube video. So when I post in a random YouTube video, all right, we see that we have a few styling issues here because this video is not taking up the full width. All right, so let's try to fix that. We have one more thing that we need to do here. We need to say props dot, whoops, we need to say ref is equal to um, props dot video ref. All right, remember that video ref is what we're passing in from the top level component. Um, text field, and we have some inline styles that we didn't capture. Um, so we're gonna say <clears throat> uh, the width is uh, 100%. We, we actually wrap this in another container, <laughs> go the full width. And then this containers, so we're just gonna say uh, style, an inline style, again, padding, yeah, padding, so go to 10 pixels, and then the height is equal to 100%. Awesome, so it compiled, and there we go. So that looks much better, right? So we have that YouTube URL, and when we paste it in, we get a nice little jumbotron here. All right, awesome. So now let's keep inspecting, and let's see if it's responsive, and yes, it is. Look at that, right? Ah, bug. Okay, so it's actually json.stringify of token, or of, sorry, of data. Cool. All right, so now when I log in, all right, I'm logged in, still logging my token. Now I create a note, so I say new, or I say note, note, and I paste in this YouTube link, and I say bold and then I hit save. Awesome. So the note is actually saved. So now when I go home, we have a list of those notes. All right, folks, so we had a bug here. The bug ended up being that we need to basically say else if props.video link exists, then set the video link and the timestamp accordingly. And then also call the parent component set video link on that um, uh, parent component or yeah all right so if we look at our application I can create a new component add a you know first note and then I'll add some text and then I'll actually highlight this make it bold underline in italics and then I'll add an h2 h2 and then it says hi and then I hit save and then it does save. This is where it would be useful to have a snack bar. 
But then if we actually go home, we see first note. And then if we go in, we see the title, the text is there, all formatted as it was supposed to be. And then if I hit play on my video and then I hit pause, and then I go ahead four minutes and then hit save, and then I go home, and then I go to my first note, and I hit play, it's going to fast forward to four minutes and 43 seconds. Okay, folks, so that's the end of our tutorial. Um, so we did a ton here. So if we just take a look at all of our code that we've written, um, we've created a server with an authentication middleware, we've added our MongoDB models, we've added our routes, not only for sign up and login, but also to create, edit, update, and delete notes. And then we also have a, a server definition here. Okay, uh, and then on the front end, we had a full-fledged React project that communicates with that back end. Um, we created our note app, which has the video note container, the video container, and the note container, as it's a com composition of the two. And then we have the home page, which is just a table that displays the notes that we have from our server. And then we created an authentication form. Uh, and then we did we created protected routes and so on. Okay, so this tutorial covers a ton of information related to the MERN stack. Um, if you have any questions at all, be sure to drop comments below and I'll be sure to clarify any questions you may have uh, going forward. But if you like the videos and you like the tutorial, please feel free to hit that like button and share with your friends um, and other people who you might who who you think might find this helpful. Um, and feel free to subscribe. Um, I'm working on another type of tutorial that's going to be more back-end focused that'll teach us how to develop um, microservices using Node.js. Uh, microservices are going to be super useful as you know application as your monolithic application starts to grow and what it'll allow us to do is scale specific services individually instead of having to scale up our, our whole application. All right, so um, again, thanks so much for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below.